We're returning to New Jersey at a path station in New York. We're approached by a group of skinheads who asked them to join their uh, Aryan race group. Uh, the father in the family was beaten, and their small infant child, they tried to grab and throw down the stairs of the subway station. This is what the father in that family had to say about his confrontation with the skinheads earlier this year. Don't you believe in white supremacy? He says, what? He says, you know, beating our niggas. So I says, uh, well, I don't want to say what I said to him. Well, and what did you say? Well, I says, I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't go around beating on people. So, uh, he said about the German race, he says, you believe in the German race, you know, German and all. He says, I'm German, but I never heard of this before. So, I then, uh, when he gave me the Sieg Heil sign, I told him that the... He gave you the Sieg Heil sign? Yeah, you know, clicking his heels, throwing his arm up. So I told him I still didn't believe in it. I told him they were a bunch of... That I, you know, they don't know they're, what they're talking about. So I left to go pick up the cats, go down the stairs, and next minute he yells, and three more fly up the stairs from the platform. And just before I could, I looked at the three, before I could turn back to look, he hit me in the face with something. He says a bottle, according to the reports, that he used a bottle to hit me upside the face with. And I've sustained some broken bones here, and four days later, my rib fractured. Then just last week, here in New Jersey at the Paramus Park Mall, troublemaking skinheads started a brawl or were involved in a brawl inside the mall. Police Chief Joseph Delaney from Paramus suggested that we ban skinheads from shopping malls. This is what he had to say when he appeared on People Are Talking. They indicated that they were a moderate arm of the alleged skinheads, that they had no prejudice against Jews or blacks. And very frankly, you know, listening to them and looking at them, a skinhead's a skinhead's a skinhead. And if they're not prone to prejudice, obviously they must be prone to violence. This was unprovoked. Okay. There's been a lot of publicity recently about skinheads. But we have also received many letters from skinheads who say that they're not all bad, they're not all racists, they're not all troublemakers, that they stand for something that is significant, that they're patriotic, that they stand up for a good, clean lifestyle. And this morning, we're going to give those skinheads a chance to speak out. They certainly come from a very diversified group. Let me introduce some of them to you right now. Bruce Kreitman is a skinhead, and he is Jewish. He lived for two years in a burned-out building in the East Village with 40 other skinheads. He used to shoot heroin and steal, but now he says he's got a good job and he doesn't do drugs. Bruce says that his goal is to let people know that not all skinheads are neo-Nazis. Troy is the director of the nationalist skinhead firm. He's proud of his country and he's proud of his working class lifestyle. Troy says that the first skinheads back in East London were black. So it's sort of, sort of ironic that they've come to symbolize racism. Otto says that for a while he became a white supremacist skinhead because he was attacked by a group of blacks. He says that everybody is prejudiced in some way, but that now he's not into white supremacy anymore. Marcus is the founder of the Skinheads Against Racial Prejudice. He says he likes the skinhead lifestyle. He likes their music. He's a hard worker, doesn't drink, smoke, or take any drugs. And Lynn, something unusual you probably haven't seen. She's an active skinhead, a female skinhead, since she was 14 years old. She got into it because she liked the hardcore music and the slam dancing. Lynn says that she's never at all believed in white supremacy. Please welcome our guests to the show. Before we begin, let's have some ground world rules. And, and certainly, from what you said, they may not be necessary here, but let's have them anyway. Nobody gets out of their seat. The chairs stay on the floor. These are very lightweight chairs here, anyway. And there will be no... Uh, verbal assaults of people. I don't want name calling and a, and, a, and, a, and a verbal assault on somebody because of their ethnic or religious background. Although most of you say this will not be necessary here. What was your reaction to what happened on Geraldo with the skinheads there, Bruce? Well, I think it was a joke, number one. A joke? What do you mean a joke? A joke on their behalf. First of all, they should have, I think they should have never been let on a show with people in the audience that they can, how do you say that, damage, you know, curse them out, call them a Jew or a Qualm or whatever, a kike or so forth. They shouldn't, they shouldn't have gave, they shouldn't have been given any people to put down. If it should have been on a one-on-one -on -one basis. That's one reason why we were there. We wanted people to you know. You were there that day? Yes. All right, who started it all? Uh, I, I, on my feeling, the person who started it was Robert Hike. Robert Hike? Yeah, Bob Hike. And who was that? Uh, he was the one in the middle. He's from the Nationals Airing Youth Movement or something like that. Yeah, from San Francisco. Okay. okay. 
What was, um, what was your reaction to some of the other incidents that took place? A family that's attacked in a subway station by skinheads. They threatened to throw the young infant down the stairs. Was that a joke, too? No, I don't, no. I don't think it was a joke. Number one, on my behalf and my feeling, my thought, my personal thought is, I don't think they made an attempt to harm that baby. Because no matter what their beliefs are or whatever, I don't think anybody would have it in their heart to try and hurt a two-month-old baby. Well, I mean, it's possible. That's what the father my, says. I, 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 I seriously doubt it. Skinheads have been depicted as almost animalistic in their ferocity. Uh, Marcus, how do you react to, to, to the police chief who says we should ban them from shopping malls? Well, first of all, it's unconstitutional to ban somebody from anywhere because of the way they look. Okay, if I'm going shopping for Christmas or whatever in a mall and they decide to kick me out, they have no right to do that. That's unconstitutional. Will you fight to stay in the mall? <clears throat> I, I would take them to court if they kicked me out in that, for that basis. Troy, how do you feel about the media presentation of what skinheads stand for? It's, it's unfair and it's very one-sided. Unfair? It's what, very one-sided. What's unfair about it? I mean, okay, skins are violent. I mean, it, we have to face facts. Are you violent? I'm not violent. I mean, but you're a skin. anybody can be violent if they're provoked. I mean, see, I mean just because of the way I look. But is the skinhead philosophy violent in its inherent nature? It's just, no. Skin's only violent if they're provoked. Yeah. You have to push a skinhead to... Far, in yeah, my opinion. To bring to them over the them. edge. You know, it's people are constantly um, patronizing us for the way we dress, the way we look. You know, it's surprised that um, we don't get in fights every day for what we do. You know, nowadays I just take it in stride. I don't bother with it. In other words, we're being crucified. That's what this is about. It's a skinhead on a cross. Skinheads are, are victims, you're saying? Yeah, we're yeah, being crucified definitely. for the way we dress. <coughs> because of our thoughts or because our music, our lifestyle. We, like, you know, you said, we are working class. Some of us, you know, have, you know, families, wives or whatever, children. You know, we want to keep it that way. You know, we're not, we're, we're growing up. You know, we bypass, you know, the certain things when we were kids, you know, living in the band building, the squats and so forth. That's all over with. It's time to grow up. Just because we still look like this, we don't want to be judged. Hey, Troy, some people might be confused by the fact that you're black and you're a skinhead? Well, first, I don't consider myself black. I'm an American, first and foremost. My background is mixed. Anyone who was born in this country is mixed. There should be no racial distinctions between white Americans, black Americans, Italian Americans. That in your skinhead group, are there blacks and whites together? There's always been blacks and whites together. It's the way it's always been. So well, skin, skin skinheads don't understand where, where skinhead came from. It was, it was working class white kids in London that loved um, the West Indian style music, they love the style of dress. I mean, this is what they were into. So it came from black culture? Well, it, it was an influence of West black Indian culture, yeah. but it came from working class youth in England. And it, it was born out of their desire to intermingle. Lynn, why are you a female skinhead? What is it about the skinhead philosophy? Could you take your cap off for a second? Could I ask you to do that so yeah. we can see your hairstyle? <laughs> it's not, you're not really down to the skin there. But basically, uh, female skinheads have this hairstyle. They have bangs and they have close cropped hair. Yeah, um, frequently it's called a Chelsea on some girls, um, and they have the fringe. Um, basically, uh, the reason I got involved with the skinhead movement was the music that started me off in general. And I'd like to correct uh, the mention of hardcore and slam dancing. I like some forms of hardcore, but mostly I enjoy the traditional skinhead music, which is ska and oi. Ska and oi. Uh -huh. What is ska? <clears throat> ska was um, basically, well. well it was, it was Jamaican uh, music. So um, it was also came from a black right. what, it, it's, it's, um It later became known as reggae okay. when the Rastafarianism <clears throat> uh, influence became. Lynn, I bet your parents go oi, though, when they look at you. <laughs> it's not only the music. How do your parents react to the, I mean, do you bring, do you have a skinhead boyfriend? Well, I did. I dated um, a boy. I'm from Detroit. I just, I'm here. I just moved to New York right. um, in August. I'm going to school at School of Visual Arts. I'm a student here. And yes, I was dating a skinhead. How did your parents school. react when you brought a skinhead home? They really liked him. As a matter of fact, my dad really enjoyed him because he had a motorcycle. My dad's really into cycles, so they, they really got along well.